Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial today on how to set up basic rates within your new book system. There are four key areas you need to focus on when creating rates. The first section we have is what we call a rate type. So using our menu we're opening up our rate type page and simply think of this as the name of the price that somebody is going to book. So if you have a standard rate that you have available all year round you would create one called standard. If you also have other promotions and things that you might want to make available at different dates throughout the year, you would also create those as rate types. As an example, stay seven, pay five, or even kids stay free. At the minute, we've got a breakfast package available in the system, but I want to create a standard price that we've got available all year round. So what I'm going to do is select add rate type in the top right corner, and I'm going to name this one standard. Underneath we then have a short description which is great as this can provide a little bit of extra information for the guests when they see this online via your new book online page. It might say something along the lines of flexible refund policy. We then have our full description and this is helpful for staff when they're making bookings for guests if they need to know exactly what is included in that rate they can put more information within here. So refundable up to 14 days prior to arrival and one night deposit is required at the time they make the booking. This information can also be inserted to, into things such as contact templates so that guests can again see exactly what inclusions they get on the rate that they book. We then have our two areas down here which can be used to restrict when and who can book this rate. So you can restrict this rate to only be bookable by specific user profiles within NewBook and you can also specify which discounts that you have set up in NewBook are eligible to come off of this rate. Once you're happy with what you've selected, you simply save and we now have our standard rate type set up and ready to go. The second area we need to take a look at now is our rate periods. So think of these as the date ranges where we want to have certain pricing or rates available for. So if you have various seasons such as your low season where you charge less and potentially don't have any minimum night stay restrictions, we would set that up as a rate period. Then we would also set up other seasons such as mid or peak where you actually are expecting to be fully booked or guests may need to pay more or or stay a longer period of time to um, occupy any sort of room or site at your property. So to open this up we head into our rate periods page in the menu and once we're on here you'll see in the right hand corner we simply add rate period in the top. So we're going to add our first one in and this is going to be called low season 2023 slash 2024. I'm going to set a color on this one because this will show on things like my bookings chart and my rates chart so the staff can see when the seasons do change. And then underneath here I'm simply setting when the low season dates start and stop throughout the year. So as an example my low period is from May 1st 2023 and it's actually going to run through until the end of July 2023. If I know that I also want these dates to be available for 2024, I simply add another date range using the button on the right. And if I want it to match exactly what it was for this same date range this year, I can simply use my calendar option and change the year. Once we've got these set, we can then either save if that was the only one we needed to create. However, if I need to fill the gaps to say that the mid-season actually picks up from the 1st of August this year, what I can do is select save another. And what that will do is save the low season rate period and then allow us to create another one. So I'm just going to simply update the name to reflect that this new one is a mid-season. I'm also going to change the color of this so that it appears again clearly on our booking chart and rates chart for our staff to know that dates are changing. And what I then need to do is ensure that I fill in the dates to fill in the gaps between the low seasons. So I need to say that essentially as of the 1st of August 2023, that's when my mid-season dates start picking up. So we change this within here, we go to August 1st, and then what I can do over on the right is say that I want this to run all the way through until the end of April next year. If we don't need another date range within this section, we can simply remove. Otherwise, you've got the ability to you know, edit those dates or add additional lines if there are different periods throughout the year where your mid-season starts and stops. So once we've done that, we save and that is our rate periods created. 
The third area we need to now set up is our actual rates. And this is where we set exactly what they need to pay per night, how long they need to stay, how much they maybe need to pay in order to confirm their booking, how many people are included in the rate, and uh, any other sort of specific items relating to it. So if we head into our main menu search and open up our rates page, this is going to bring you to a list of existing rates if you have any pre-created from previous years. As you can see, I don't have any rates set up as I'm creating them from scratch. So in order to create my first rate in the system, I'm going to select add rate in the top right corner. This will bring us to our add rate page where we need to fill in all of our basic rate options tab first. We would then also take a look at our advanced options tab to see any additional items that we want to preset within the actual rate itself. The first section we have is our rate name and we always recommend that you have some kind of naming convention or format for this so it's clear for staff to see what the rate is if they ever need to search for it or edit it in the future. As an example, I'm going to call this one my standard powered site low 23 slash 24. Now that I've set my name, I can head down to our base price calculations drop down. So this is where all of our standard sort of basic rate pricing is available. You'll notice by default it locks on to repeat for listed nights, which is probably the most standard rate setup that you can do. And what you'll see is it's referring to this tab here where it's saying each night will be charged whatever amount you set within this section. So as an example, if my low season powered sites are going to be $20 a night, I would simply place 20 within here. For those of you who then want to set exactly how many people are actually included in that nightly $20 fee, you have the option to predefine that on the right. If you're happy for any two occupants, so an adult and a child or two adults to be included in that, you can actually change the combined included occupant setting to yes. And then above that, you would simply say any two occupants are included for that $20. We then have the option over on the left hand side to actually set how much we want to charge for any extra or additional occupant that stays. So with this area here is relating to this tab and you can see we can set the extra fees at a per occupant level. So if I have an extra adult I might want to charge $8, an extra child might be 5 infants might be 3 and animals might be $10. So new book will know that any two people will get the $20 per night, but if we have a third, fourth, fifth, sixth person stay, it will charge them the extra fees based on what we set within this area. It is also important to note that your categories are where you set the maximum amount of guests that are actually able to book in that style of accommodation. So new book will know, regardless of what you have set within this rate, um, once you hit the maximum amount of occupants that you're not able to book any additional guests over that. If we head over to our advanced rate options tab, this is where we can find some settings such as our minimum stay duration or maximum stay duration. So if you are wanting to set a minimum amount of nights that the guest has to stay in order to be able to book, this is where you can do that. Other than that, we're going to head down to the bottom of the page now where we can set our deposit rules and our adjustment fees. So this is where we set exactly um, how much the guest actually has to pay in order to confirm their booking. And it's also how your staff can manage overdue deposits within the system. So clicking on deposit rules will give you two options. You can create your own standalone ones, which means every single time you create a rate, you need to select add deposit and manually fill in the deposit requirements here. What we do recommend is that you create booking rule templates for your deposits and also for your adjustment fees, such as cancellation fees. And what this will do is allows you to predefine them and then simply select and your book will pull them through based off of those templates that you have set. So in order to have them appear here, you do need to pre-create them in your menu by heading to booking rule templates and once they're saved you'll be able to select them from here and you can also apply these in bulk to rates after you've created them if you forgot to register them at this stage. So we can see here this one is saying zero days after the booking is made they need to pay a 40% um, total of their stay and that applies to offline bookings that staff members make and online bookings via new book online.
we can then also see that seven days prior to arrival, we have to have the remaining 100% actually paid. So they've got to be fully prepaid prior to check-in. If you are wanting to automate cancellation fees or online modification fees, again, click adjustment fees here, and then you'll be able to use your rule templates and pull through what those fees are. In this scenario, if the guest happens to cancel um, within seven days of arrival, New Book will know to automatically raise a charge for one night's accommodation. You'll then be able to either refund the balance or potentially hold the credit for them to use for a future stay. Now that we've selected our deposit rules and cancellation fees, we can simply select save and that is our first rate created. So we have our standard powered site rate for our low season 23 and 24. The best thing now is that if I want to create my unpowered site, I can simply go duplicate rate in the top, which copies everything we've just done. And in this scenario, I just simply update the name to be unpowered site, so UPS. We can then simply adjust the nightly cost to be slightly less and if extra pricing for occupants was different we could adjust that but other than that we really just need to select save. So we now have our two rates for our low season. If we now needed to go and create our mid-season rates, very much the same process. You can continue to duplicate the rates and update the name. This time we'll change the name to mid and we're also going to adjust the price as it's more expensive for our unpowered sites in the mid-season. I'm also going to pop into my advanced rate options here and set a two-night minimum stay for this rate. I'm going to cross-check that my deposit rule is correct, which it is, and we're going to keep our adjustment fee the same as well as it falls into the low slash mid-season. We then save, and again, we can duplicate this one, do our powered site mid-season rate, and update the pricing here to be the $30 value and then simply save. Now that we've correctly created our rates in your book, the fourth and final step is for us to apply these all together. So you can apply your rates by heading to the bottom of the page that you're currently on and you can see there is an add applied rate button. This essentially connects all of the dots of the previous steps that we've completed. So what we need to do is select our rate type to say that it is a standard price. You'll see it's pulling our standard rate for our powered site mid-season here. And then on the right, I need to attach it to the correct category of accommodation. So we're going to select powered RV sites and then underneath our rate period being our mid-season. Once we're happy with that, we simply save another. That will apply the rate and now we can continue to apply the remainder of ours. So if we click into here, and we select mid, we can then do our unpowered rate, remove the category of powered and replace it with the correct one, and leave it on the correct season and then save another. We could now go and do our low by changing the name. This one is unpowered, so we can keep it on the same category. We just need to update the date range here for our low season. Save another, remove this, pop in our powered site low, update our category and then simply save. And that's all of our rates now applied. To cross check exactly what we've done and make sure that it all looks correct, we can then head into our rates chart in the menu, which we highly recommend that you do as it's a great cross checking tool to ensure that you haven't made any mistakes. As you can see on the chart, it's defaulted to the current day. You'll see the color in the top of the date range here is indicating what season we're in and when we hover it says low and it tells you when those dates run through. We can see our powered RV site with our standard rate being $20 through that period and then our unpowered RV at the $18. If we want to jump forward we can also have a look at our consecutive rate period. So if we want to have a look at our mid-season we can click into here and you'll notice that the color changes and you'll also see that the pricing updates as well. If we've got any different minimum night stay restrictions as well, when you hover, it will tell you that. But you can also use your chart settings to display additional information by default, such as displaying minimum nights and simply reload. And you can see the minimum nights set below us. If we pop back a previous day, you can see that they change price, change season and minimum nights. If you've got any questions regarding the setup of rates, bear in mind that on any of the pages that we've looked at today, you can simply click on the question mark icon and it's going to show you recommended articles relating to that feature or page. 
Um, as an example, if you wanted to have a look at how to stop seller rate once you've made something available or learn more about your rate chart, click the article, add it to your favorites, or even click this icon to expand it so you can print it off later. That does bring us to the end of our video tutorial on our basic rate setup. We hope you've enjoyed and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.